live. Is it telling you that it's, yeah, it's telling you that it's, we're live? Yep. Oh yeah, okay, Sasha, okay, we are. Hi everybody, Leticia here, and I have a couple of wonderful guests with me today. Uh, as promised, we are doing session two of my recently announced Money Matters webinar. And uh, today's topic is who will look after you and where will the money come from? In recent months and uh, weeks, we have heard of some very scary situations happening in our long-term care facilities here in Ontario. And many of us have loved ones that are in these facilities. Perhaps we would prefer that they were at home with us rather than us being separated from our loved ones. Unfortunately, for many people, providing care in their home is not financially viable. It's not an option. However, statistics show that most people when given a choice, we prefer to receive care in their own home and not go to a facility. And again, in recent months and weeks, what we've seen has been downright scary, what has been happening in some of these facilities. So today's topic is, I find, very, very timely considering the, the situation we've been going through. And in addition, so what I have, who I have with me today are two wonderful guests, uh, Cynthia Schindler and Miles Posner. They are the founders of My Dignity. My Dignity is the leading provider of home care assistance plans in Canada. And here we are talking about financial assistance. Financial assistance that can be provided to ourselves and our loved ones when the need for care arises. And as we will see in today's presentation, that need statistically arises in three out of four Canadians over the age of 65. So it's a very significant percentage of, of us that will sooner or later require assistance <coughs> with daily living activities. So with, without further ado, I will go ahead and uh, read um, Cynthia and Miles's bios, and uh, then we will go ahead with our presentation, okay? Okay, so Miles pa Posner. Miles has been an integral part of the Canadian insurance industry for over 30 years and comes with a wealth of experience, knowledge, and integrity. He has owned several successful insurance agencies and helped to develop what is now the largest life insurance brokerage in the country. That's the brokerage I happen to be working with. His passion remains in the area of product design, development, and marketing with the ensuing long-term care crisis facing Canada and the issues associated with traditional insurance products the creation of My Dignity was a natural progression for him. Through My Dignity, Miles is committed to the continuous development of long-term care products to better serve his fellow Canadians. And moving on to Cynthia, Cynthia Schindler. Cynthia's professional background includes 10 years of practice as a behavioral geriatric specialist in long-term care facilities. During this time, she was chosen to be part of an elite federal government team whose mandate was to develop practices to improve the quality of life for those requiring assistance. She quickly realized that the correlation between advocacy and financial resources was directly related to the quality of care one receives. As a result, Cynthia made a bold move and entered the insurance industry where she could better fulfill the need she knew existed. For the last 20 years, she, said she has successfully guided and educated people on the benefits of specialty insurance plans. The development of My Dignity reflects her years of experience, understanding, and caring for others. So thanks once again, Cynthia and Miles, for joining me here today. It is an absolute pleasure, and uh, hopefully our audience will, will value what you have to share with us today. So without further ado, I will... Um, I will share our slides and Miles, I will give you control so you can uh, go through the slides. Well, thank you very much, Leticia. My pleasure. Okay, so my dignity, your care, your way. That's what it's all about. You pick and choose the type of care you need. Uh, Miles, all you have to do is go into uh, presentation mode. I will, I will help you with that. So you have to click on the little button in the bottom right hand corner. Let me help you. Right here with the, yeah, that's yeah. right. Click on that. And now what you wanna do is just go through the slides, go forward through the slides. There you are. There we go. 
Sorry for the delay. Anyways, to get right into it, people have to ask themselves, what are your chances in your lifetime of some of these particular situations, like losing a home to fire? One in 1,200. Having a car accident, one in 240. Well, that equates to 4%, but all we hear about is car accidents and the problems involved with them. Check this statistic out. There it is. Needing assistance when you can no longer care for yourself. I bet you can't guess what the number's going to be. Oh, I kind of gave it away earlier, so. You did. Actually, I'm lying. It's 74% of individuals who have reached the age of 65 and over will require some form of future extended care. They're going to need people to take care of them. So without boring you, you can see a little movie theater that's empty because of COVID. But what we're going to do is we're going to play a five-minute video that will explain to you and give you the landscape of long-term care and the solution available. So sit back for about five minutes before I return and enjoy yourselves. And really, this is very educational. It is. Turn your mic off. Oh, oh yeah, you know what? You're right. I have to, uh, yeah, give it a stop for a second. I need to allow, yeah, um, don't, don't press. Yeah, you could, you could scroll it back to the, uh, scroll it back to the beginning, Miles. Scroll it back to the beginning. Right. Give me, no, thank you very much. You know what? Uh, I'll have to take back control of the, no, give me one second. Uh, no, because I can hear the sound, but I need to give permission for the sound to be, shared uh one second share computer sound okay let's try that again can you hear it now whether we like it or not we're getting older as a society the prospect of an aging population has been with us for a long time and although aging in canada has evolved almost exactly as projected the outlook is still somewhat shocking. In the coming decade, there'll be more than 8 million Canadians over age 65. For the first time, there are now more seniors in our country than children under 14. 90% of people over 65 are currently living with at least one chronic condition, and many with more than one, like diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. As Canada's population ages, these chronic conditions will require even more focus. The number of Canadians currently on wait lists for long-term care facilities is still in the thousands, with no end in sight. Many Canadians think that the obvious solution to an aging population is to rely on the government, not appreciating they are merely a recipient of limited care with no control over who treats you, when you receive care, and what services are provided. There is nothing personal about publicly funded home care. It's all about how the individual, the person in need of care fits into the system. Most of the time, there is a gap in the amount of care that is delivered. And so families are in a situation where they're filling in the gaps. Further, government funded home care services are becoming increasingly more restrictive every year and mainly addressing the more acute short-term medical needs, leaving the less urgent but no less important activities of daily living assistance to informal caregivers. Informal home care assistance provided by family is not a minor commitment. Averaging 20 hours of dedicated care per week, often resulting in signs of distress, anger and depression. So if long-term care facilities are overburdened and difficult to access, and the government will not look after us. Where do we turn for those of us who will be reaching that eventual stage of infirmity? You can actually insure yourself and your loved ones for the unknown health support you may need in the future. It's called My Dignity 
home care assistance, and many Canadians are relying on this very viable solution. My Dignity is all about the person. It's a, a, a policy that the person can determine how, when, where, and what kind of service is provided to them. My Dignity home care coverage can provide benefits such as personal support workers, home conversion expenses, meals, transportation expenses, health monitoring systems, medical supplies, wheelchairs, physiotherapists, and a host of other services depending on the policy you select. It's person-driven care as opposed to systems-driven care. A policy that leads to peace of mind, all procured with no medical checkup, just a simple questionnaire. Your care, your way. Independence has always been uh, important to my wife and I in other parts of our lives. And the uh, My Dignity uh, service and what it provides allows us to continue to practice our independence by living in our own home. As a caregiver as well as a healthcare professional, seeing needs from both sides of the system, I would definitely recommend people invest in a My Dignity type plan for financial security, for peace of mind, and knowing that those resources are going to be needed at some point in the future, possibly even sooner than you might think. In our own particular circumstance, I reckon my father's care on the first two year average was about $122,000. So in my personal family's income tax bracket, that meant my parents needed to liquidate some $200,000 just to ensure that my dad was safe. I am glad I accepted it and presently I'm introducing it to my family and my friends. I've already referred people uh, to my dignity who are friends of mine or business associates. A policy that leads to peace of mind, all procured with no medical checkup, just a simple health questionnaire. As all the facts and figures of our aging population are analyzed, pondered and fretted over by millions of us, there's a simple solution to at least ensure that we can be looked after when we can no longer look after ourselves. So take time to prepare now and secure your dignity your way. Thank you for that video, Miles. I just wanted to say to our Facebook friends, uh, while the video screen is maximized, while our presentation is maximized, I'm not able to see any questions uh, or comments that may appear. So if there are any questions or if any of you have any questions, any comments, I will, we will answer them together at the end of uh, our presentation today. Okay, thank you for your patience. Uh, Miles, go ahead, please. Sorry for interrupting. Okay, so what we want to do now. Oh, are you still? No, you're controlling it. We want to move to the next slide. Uh, here, I helped you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyways, thank you and welcome back, Miles. In light of the current health crisis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. You, you know the underlying message is care for the elderly because they are the most vulnerable and at the greatest risk. Simply, people do not want to ever be alone. and They absolutely do not ever want to die alone. So my question is, why does it take a pandemic to wake people up to the fact that bad things can happen and it can happen overnight to anyone? Simply, people really need a strategy in advance to plan for their future health care. Well, let's go through this. What assistance is available to somebody? Well, let's take a look. How can you plan for your future? You can rely on the government, and you notice I have a question mark there. And I just want you to know the word rely really refers to the fact that you can count on. And I don't believe you can count on the government. I've been around too long and seen too much. Well, and we've all seen what happened in recent months and, and the scandal. There was an entire scandal, the Canadian military uh, released a report on some of the abuses that were happening in some of our local 
long-term care facilities, absolutely revolting and, and, and it's just terrifying that that could happen to any one of our, uh, any of us or our loved ones. So right, right. this is why we need options. We need choices out there. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Ah, we can rely on family and friends. Really? Until either they're not going to be your family and friends. And as you noted in the video, uh, there's a lot of anger and distress and depression when you've got to be the caregiver. I mean, but many people feel that's the, the actual uh, thing that's going to happen to them, that they're going to rely on them until people start to revolt. This is my favorite reason. <laughs> Let's pretend it won't happen and hope for the best. That's denial. Yeah. Well, you can plan with insurance, and we're going to look into this a little bit more. And we're going to look into it with government as a comparison to see which is the most viable, because many Canadians believe government health and planning with insurance are the two most viable options. So let's explore it a little bit more. Ah. Just recently, just before COVID hit, there was uh, an expose in the Globe and Mail. And these are some of the highlights of the expose. First of all, they noted the cost of publicly funded long-term care for seniors is expected to triple in the next 30 years. Well, if they're not doing a great job now and they don't have the budgets now, look out for what's happening in 30 years. It's terrifying. Furthermore, the government have not created any specific funding or planned programs to cover these long-term care costs. This next little slide is my favorite because it really hits home. The burden of home care in three quarters of the cases is going to be on family. Well, let's press on a little bit. Let's do a comparison of government versus insurance. Well, government or army, as I like to refer it to, you are simply a recipient of care. You do not control over who treats you, when you receive care, or what services are provided, simply. You're at their mercy. With an insurance plan, you are the consumer and you have the control over who, when, and what is provided. With government, you have to be initially uh, looked into to see if you're going to get it. And if you do get it, it might not be forever. Okay, because the people that uh, look into it are regulated healthcare professionals. And anytime the assistance can be declined up front or reduced down the line. So you really can't rely on the government. With insurance, with our product, eligibility is immediate upon the completion of a simple form signed by your own doctor. Further to just explain what government does cover and what it doesn't cover, something referred to as instrumental ADLs. ADLs means activities of daily living. And instrumental refers to things such as laundry, grocery shopping, light cleaning, even meal preparation, which is vital for one's health. They do not readily support that. Having a plan of insurance, you have the flexibility to direct the person who's taking care of you to do whatever you need, whether it's personal care, homemaking, or even community outings. May I intervene for a um, second there, Miles? Um, I just want to attest to what you're saying in terms of the amount of care that you may receive. My own mother is a survivor of a critical health condition, and while she was recovering, the government felt that they could give her two hours of nursing care per day. Well, she needed a lot more than two hours. My father had to take, he took all the vacation days he had available, and then he had to take unpaid time from work to become her caregiver during that time. It was an extremely stressful time for the family. I wish I had known, I wish I had planned ahead of time 
this was this happened more than 10 years ago at the time i didn't even know about these things i was barely, I was barely getting into the industry uh, but and then a friend of mine similar situation she could use help with meal preparation all of that is coming out of her own pocket had she known ahead of time and unfortunately that's a separate story but um it's unbelievable how, how even, and she's a young person and she found herself in a situation where she could have used this sort of hair, um, care. Um, anyway, that's well, all know, I yeah, to say. I agree with you. People don't know what's gonna happen. They can only second guess it until they're in that situation. And then that's when it hits home. Yeah. It, anyways, moving along, thank you for that. No problem. Let's, look into some insurance options. Well, there's something known as traditional insurance. It's been around for a while. It's a great plan if you can get it and if you can afford it. Yeah. Yes, the products are extremely expensive. And in fact, they're out of the reach of most Canadians. The process of getting a policy is very cumbersome. In uh, the underwriting process, insurance companies, besides putting you through the car wash, they will ask you for your doctor's clinical notes. And these are notes the doctor scribes to himself relating to the case. Nobody knows what's in the clinical notes. In fact, yes, the doctors many times make mistakes. The doctors many times are relating it to different people. The doctors are probably thinking of the next football game or whatever, and they're and they're not their minds not with it. With the clinical notes, the insurance company has a snapshot of who you are. Those clinical notes basically will dictate whether you get it or not. Besides the other um, situations that restrict you, and half the people are declined. Yeah. So and between yeah, so I this is the also... landscape. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Miles. Sorry for interrupting again. Um, having sold in the past some of these, what we would call traditional long-term care insurance plan, we had a bit more choice in the marketplace in the past. But as of about a year and a half ago, a lot of companies have decided, well, these products are not profitable for us, so we're just not going to sell them anymore. And what is left in the marketplace are absolutely very expensive plans where even clients who would need them the most and who could benefit the most, when I show them the premium, they're like, yeah, I'm not paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, thank you very much, you know, uh, or even thousands sometimes, depending on the amount of coverage you want to apply for. So while those plans are still available uh, and perhaps could be used as a supplement, I do feel your plan is more within the reach of most Canadians. And um, and that's why we're talking about it. And, and also, I agree with you when it comes to underwriting. I also have had clients decline. We know that for these traditional long-term care insurance plans, between clients between the age of 70 and 80, there was only a 25% approval rate. So 75 of people who apply would get declined automatically. Yeah, the underwriting, the, uh, the underwriting is archaic. That's for sure. Mm. Okay. My Dignity Home Care Assistance. This is the new standard. It's the gold standard. It's been around for 10 years. And why is it the gold standard? Well, there's two real big reasons. Quality of care at home is better and longevity is increased compared to a facility. Better to have care one-on-one -on -one than one on a number of people in a facility. And obviously, everybody, 100% of the people, if they're given the choice, remain at home, go to facility, they all want to stay at home. And our plan is very easy to explain and very easy to obtain. In fact, it's been referred to as a gift to Canadians because it's affordable, no medical exam, it does provide peace of mind, a valuable solution for future health care, i.e. a strategy. As an added value situation, the plan qualifies as a PHSP, uh, private health service plans, which means expenses towards the medical tax credit, okay, can be incorporated into people's tax return. So there is a bit of a break when it comes to paying the premium reflected on the credit and your tax. 
Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so I think this is where Cynthia's part starts. I will give you control of the mouse. Uh, Cynthia, give me one second. Uh, no. Uh, okay, remote control. Give Cynthia the control. Okay. See if you can start from here, Cynthia, please. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miles. We're, we're going to discuss a strategy that makes the most sense for, for people going forward in terms of their future health care, and it's called home care assistance. The My Dignity plans include three levels of coverage. The first and the most important level is, is those benefits that give you the freedom and the flexibility to choose your care, your way, in your own home. Oh, it took you back to the beginning. So let me, you know, I can actually bring you back to the slide you were on. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, there we are. And okay. Let's try now, Cynthia. Sure. Thank you. My pleasure. There, yeah, it's working perfectly. Okay. So the second level of benefit that come with all policies is a supplemental hospital and health benefit plan, a little value added mini health plan. And I'll go into more detail as we go along. The third level of benefit included with all policies is a family support program. Now, let's talk about some of the salient features of the plans. So when a person needs to trigger their coverage, they don't have to satisfy a waiting period. Many, many financial uh, tools do require that. Here, there is no waiting period to begin utilizing the benefits. The underwriting, unlike the traditional insurance carriers, is very liberal. And as an example, even type 2 diabetics can qualify. Important to note that rates are based on the age at time of application. And people anywhere from age 18 to 80 can apply, but realistically, this plan is, is, should be focusing on, on those people as they advance in years 55 and up to age 80 is a great time to be putting this kind of strategy in place although younger people are not precluded. When couples apply together, they receive a 10% discount off uh, the rates, which are already reasonable in the first place. So when I'm teaching and I talk to people about these plans, how they actually work is that you have a choice between three different benefit amounts. And I kind of refer to it as, as a virtual bank account or a line of credit that you don't have to pay back when, when the need arises that you need care in your own home. So there's three benefit amounts, 50,000, 100,000, and 150,000. And it's these benefit amounts that will pay for a whole host of services, supplies, and equipment for care in your own home, along with the hospital benefits, the little mini health plan. It really gives the person the opportunity to be in the driver's seat. You've got the flexibility to choose what you need at the time. It truly becomes your care, your way. And I think that is dignity. I love it. Now, in order to trigger the uh, benefits, one, one's doctor would be signing on a claim form that either physically or cognitively there's an issue. When that happens, I think one of the most important benefits that we are able to access via the My Dignity plans is up to $29,000 a year to pay for somebody qualified to assist you, a personal support worker, somebody that you like who's going to come when you need them to come in and do what you need them to do. It, 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 it isn't fair to expect let's say a son that's caring for his mother to be in a situation where he's forced to clean up her bottom. That, that's just not the way it should be. And with a plan, you can avoid that and, and, and maintain the positive loving relationships that people want to have. Another benefit that helps cover off the most expensive part of care, and that's the labor cost, is what we call respite services. Respite services can be activated when your typical caregiver needs to have a holiday or a break. So there's an additional $5,600 to cover off labor costs. So if you look at it, that's almost $35,000 that you can be reimbursed back from your virtual bank account uh, that you've established as your plan. That's amazing. Yeah, it can also be used to cover things like walk-in tubs 
chairlifts, raised toilet seats. Maybe the carpets have to be removed because somebody's walking with a walker and that's very dangerous when you um, have carpets and a walker. So there's a whole host of things that you can do to help make your home safer so that you can manage independently longer. In fact, you can order meals up to $1,100 a month from your favorite restaurants. This is pretty amazing. It'll also help cover, it covers so many benefits, but these are just some of the highlights. Incontinence supplies up to $1,500 a year, as well as prov provision for psychological support because this really truly is, with, without a plan in place, it, it becomes the most stressful and the most expensive time in people's lives. So there is psychological support in the amount of $2,750 to help you know, families that are dealing with this cope better. May I uh, interject for a second, Cynthia? We've all heard about the sandwich generation and it, the burden of care often falls on women, a woman that may be looking after you know, an elderly loved one at home while at the same time looking after a household, children, grandchildren potentially. My mom, looking after my own grandmother who has for the past three, four months been in a care facility, I cannot tell you the stress. My mom couldn't take it anymore. And they were just getting to the point of, uh, of, of, of seeing if there was any assistance available. And then my grandmother took a fall down the stairs. It just became absolutely impractical for my mom to be the only caregiver. Now, had she had, if my grandmother had had this type of plan in place, which honestly, I really wish I had found out about all of this sooner, uh, in particular about your fantastic plan. Um, you know, my mom could have, my parents could have had a PSW in the home assisting my mom to look after my grandmother, in which case my grandmother could have still remained at home. Right now, that, that, that just was not practical. And, and the only option became uh, a care facility. So just sharing my personal experience, this is, and, and, and the psychological support aspect, I know my mom as a caregiver would have benefited from that. And, 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 yeah. See, this is this is a problem that's frequently overlooked that that and what I've learned in my many many years of experience in in the healthcare industry with, and with specialization in long term care is that many times it's a spouse that that's a caregiver for the person who's not well and what ultimately happens almost all of the time is that caregiving spouse actually gets worse off at some wow. point down the road than the person they're caring for. We, we, wow. we can't have that. I mean, we, we have the knowledge and the tools now to make sure that families don't fall uh, prey to that situation. The second level of benefits you'll recall is a mini uh, health and hospital plan. You do not have to be in a situation where physically or cognitively your doctor says you need this. If you need it, it's available. So it will help cover up hospital hospital costs if you need a semi-private or a private room. And sometimes people don't realize this fact. Um, when the caregiving burden uh, becomes too much and there's no long-term care bed available for uh, the person who needs assistance, and, and that's a, a big problem for us because there's 30,000 people in Ontario waiting for uh, that level of care. Many times families are, are put into situations where they're so stressed that they wind up taking their loved one to the hospital thinking that OHIP will, you know, pay the hospital costs. That's not the case. Yeah. The hospital is an acute care center, not a long-term uh, uh, care facility. So they are mandated to charge a per diem rate for that service. And again, I can, I, I can attest to this because my grandmother was initially taken to a hospital and she stayed there for about two weeks. And after that, the hospital was putting pressure on my parents to find her a long-term care facility. Otherwise, they were going to have to pay nightly, a nightly rate to the hospital for my grandmother to remain in the hospital. Thankfully, yeah. a spot did become available. And, and it's partly because my parents had the means to pay out of pocket for my grandmother to be placed in a home. Uh, if they had to wait for government care, they were told there was going to be at least a three-month waiting. In other words, if the government had to subsidize some of the cost of care, there was going to be at least a three-month waiting period for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what were my parents going to do? They were literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. They're, they're constantly, every time they were going to the hospital, they were being told, yeah, she can't stay here anymore. Like You, you guys basically deal with it. They, they kept trying to send my grandma home. And in fact, that's what happened. She was sent home. She was sent home prematurely from the hospital. Uh, and my mother... I'm fortunate enough that my brother works as a nurse. And when my brother saw what my poor mom was left to deal with, she's like, she cannot, she is not, this patient should not be at home right now because she needs a certain level of care. And she needed at least two per, two people to be able to move her around. My mom was a phone all day. 
Exactly. Exactly. Family caregivers do not know how to to transfer people, how to base people who can who who are physically able to do it themselves. It's a very dangerous situation, not only for the patient but also the family member. You risk uh, getting hurt. So Absolutely. thank you. My mom literally hurt her back trying to move yeah. my grandmother, yeah. who had become essentially, unfortunately, bedridden, and there was. The yeah. need for a second person to be able to assist yeah. with this, uh, with the moving, and my father is still working, so my mom was left by her, just losing sleep. It was just a very bad situation. Anyway, just and wanted to, and uh, that sadly is the case for the majority of families. So we need to do a much better job of educating Canadians about what they must do to uh, prepare for this time. Now, That's getting back to yeah. the yeah, getting back to the plan details. So, the mini health plan also will help cover off convalescent hospital costs. So, when you need to go to recoup from maybe a surgery or a fracture, uh, there's some dollars to help cover those costs. It will cover off lab, some lab tests that that OHIP does not. Um, also. Uh, it offers people an opportunity to get an MRI done on their own terms, their own timeline, because today many people are waiting four or five months for wow. an MRI, and it's an important diagnostic test to determine what's underlying situations. So if you have the freedom to get this done privately uh, on your own timeline, it can actually make a matter of life and death. And I've seen that happen for many of our uh, clients and policyholders. It'll cover off ambulance, accidental uh, dental care uh, as a result of an accident. And bear in mind, any of the expenses that we uh, incur here will come out of that virtual bank account. The last level of care is a, is a family support program. And um, not only is it there for the person who has the insurance policy, but if, if one spouse for some odd reason does not qualify for the coverage, that person can actually use um, the, their, their, their loved one's policy without having any impact on the dollar value of, of that policy. So it's, it's, it's really a, a nice um, and thoughtful tool. What it does is it gives uh, access to uh, a, a call center where you can ask health and legal related questions. There's actually lawyers in various areas of specialty there to help. You might need to ask questions, how you set up a, tr a trust, what are responsibilities of an executor that I need to be aware of, all these kinds of very important and valuable things. It also provides assistance when you come home from the hospital, free housekeeping, medication delivery, um, uh, money for people to travel to come see you, uh, it pays for Lifeline, so that's the buzzer system that goes off if you fall in, that means somebody will come. Wow. It also provides for medical second opinion, which is really huge because when people are diagnosed with serious illnesses, that's a very traumatic time and you don't want to be under pressure trying to find somebody who is going to, you know, verify, you know, and give you a, a bona fide qualified second opinion. So this is a very useful helpful thing for families along with free psychological support up to 12 hours and and so in the situation that we're dealing with now the pandemic many people are anxious and they've used this benefit to you know talk to someone ease their their worries may I ask also, you something Sorry. Yeah, go ahead go ahead I was just gonna ask and I think you just addressed it this this uh, family support program benefits once a once somebody acquires one of these policies they don't necessarily have to have made another claim on the policy in order to access these ancillary services, correct? That's right. This is another benefit that's available immediately from day one. So anytime you may have need of this, you are welcome to utilize it, along with a discount card that comes with this third level of, of the policy. And this uh, discount provides all access to all kinds of product and service providers across the province. So you would just go online and look and see what you need. And because of the fact that you're a policyholder, you will get uh, you know, special discounts and so on. So there's value immediately from day one uh, for the whole family. Now, uh, how do we qualify for coverage? So very much unlike the traditional uh, insurance scenario that we discussed earlier, where, where basically you're really green streamed and dry cleaned. Here, it's just a matter of a simple application that someone genuinely has to be able to respond favorably to. And if they can do that, then their acceptance is immediate. There's no degrading process where you have to have a telephone interview to assess your cognitive status, none of that, okay? So um, 
you might be asking yourself, how do you trigger a benefit? This is what, what, what happens. There's two ways in order to, uh, that have to, two ways that you can trigger a benefit. The first one is if you find yourself in a state of physical dependency. It doesn't matter how you get in that state. It doesn't matter if you've had a surgery, uh, a fracture, uh, a serious illness, or you've just gotten frail over time, relevant. What needs to happen is that your doctor has to document that you cannot do two out of these six activities of daily living. They are transferring, dressing, bathing, toileting, continence, and eating. And continence refers to loss of bowel or bladder function. Transferring is a mobility issue where, in reality, this is where most claims start for people. Yeah. They, uh, you know, have, have difficulty getting up out of a chair or out of bed and moving around from point A to point B. So if they can't do that, they probably can't dress or bathe themselves safely. So that's already three out of the two that you only require to begin utilizing your benefits. The second way in which you can trigger a claim on, on the home care assistance is if you have a, a mental issue where you are no longer able to think uh, rationally and reason for yourself. So very simply put, no face-to-face -face situations are required in order to get an understanding of the plan and how it works, nor to apply for it. So uh, what can happen is that the applications are fillable and digital signatures are allowed. The applications can be scanned and emailed back. And all that's required to activate coverage is a void check because the insurance carrier will collect a premium which will ultimately put your policy in, in place. So it's a very simple, uh, friendly process. And I very much urge you um, to connect with our valued partner, uh, Letitia Montana, Thank to you. get more information and guidance on this issue and what can be done about it. And, and maybe to get a, a personalized executive overview, and that's what we're looking at here, to see what you know a plan might cost for you or for your loved ones. So as an example here, we have a gentleman age 62, and you can see the premiums are extremely reasonable. $54.18, just under 118 for 100,000, uh, around $137 for 150000 plus you get a tax receipt for, for a non-taxable benefit. I think Miles is right. I think this is a gift for Canadians. Yeah. And, I, and I hope you take notice. I know that a lot of children, you know, want to give their parents the love back that they received. And, and many of them, what they're doing is they buy what I think is a very meaningful gift. They buy a home care policy for their folks, allowing, allowing the children to be actually the managers of the care as opposed to the caregivers because they're not trained in that regard and they have their own lives. That, and don't that forget, they be Father's Day is coming up. Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. Spoken like a true father. <laughs> so, so thank you so much. To, no, thank you, Cynthia, for all that. So, so just to make it clear, somebody could uh, purchase a policy for a parent. They could be the premium prayer, uh, payer and then who would be the owner of the policy? Would it be the parent themselves or, or the child would be the owner? Because I know, for it, example- what, what, Whatever suits the situation. The child does okay. not have to own the policy. The parent can own the policy. Okay. It's, uh, but the payer will be the one that will receive the tax receipt. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. And so that's, that's really great flexibility. Um, it is, it is. Yeah, that's really, obviously- No the family still, should be without it, without question. I, I will be discussing this. Um, unfortunately, in my mom's case, she, uh, because of the kind of health condition that she had, we've gone through the question, she wouldn't qualify, but there are, my father probably could qualify, and there are so many other people out there that I know would benefit from, from having this sort of plan. So uh, 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 you, you, made, you made something come up in my mind. You know, many yeah. times when couples do their planning and, you know, they uh, expect one another to sort of have the same sort of plan. In this particular case, if one of the couples is unable to qualify, that should not preclude the person who is healthy enough to get the insurance policy from buying it. Because quite frankly, they will be using their own personal assets uh, very quickly to take care of the person who couldn't qualify. So it's only appropriate that the uh, 
a person that can qualify for the insurance get themselves that cushion of protection. Thank you for reminding me about that because I think that's an important point. You know, people think, well, if I can't get it, then then you know he shouldn't have it either, and that's and that's just <laughs> that's awkward thinking. I, I can't I can't even imagine like why somebody would think like that. But but I hear you. I have come across clients. Um, yeah, and, and that doesn't that doesn't make any planning sense. If no, you can get it, it, you should get it. That's um, right. Now, you know, the, the, issue, the only issue I've come across, and, and this, this is not just related to this plan, but in general, it's just people think it won't happen to me. That, that, that feeling is like, yeah, I hear these are the statistics, but no, yeah, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. You know, or, or, or people feel that they have enough financial resources and, and even for people who are very well off financially, my question is, why do you want to use your own money when you can buy this protection for pennies on the dollar for an event that is so that has such a high likelihood of happening? Exactly. You know, we, buy car insurance, we buy home insurance. I understand, like, legally we're forced to have those things, so people don't give it a lot of thought, but we pay those premiums. And in fact, you know what? Uh, I just saw one of the ladies in my network who is a real estate investor, she actually had a property fire. Thank God nothing happened to her tenants. Uh, but that was pretty scary. I mean, but she, imagine if these events, if those events happen, but then here we're dealing with a risk that has a three out of four chance of happening. And, and people are often thinking, well, I, I, it's not going to happen to me. That risk is going to increase as people get older. And, and as we live longer. And another point that you brought up, yes, it, this having a strategy is definitely pennies on the dollar and it prevents you from making bad decisions in a very stressful uh, time frame. And you know, one of the things that I learned very quickly when we developed this platform was that while we were trying to be considerate to the masses of our nation and, and give something that was attainable to everyone, the first people to actually purchase the policies tended to be the wealthy because they understood this tool for what it is. It's a wealth preservation tool. Yeah, you're, you, you, you have the chance to offload the risk to an insurance company instead exactly. of you using your own money. And, and my contacts who are real estate investors understand the power of leverage. Use a little bit of your own money to acquire a larger type assets and, and this exactly is, this is exactly that type of scenario um and and moreover people who whose wealth is primarily tied up in real estate my only concern there is uh liquidity uh how liquid is that and even if you do have access to let's say a home equity line of credit or you can access some equity eventually that's your own wealth becoming diminished instead of you simply using somebody else's money to to get access to to that care so so even for people who have other options, to me, this is still the best option because you're not using your own wealth. You're using, you're offloading that risk. Just, so, to, just to give you one last bit of feedback, having yeah. overseen so many claims now for loved ones and families and, and you know, being there for them and with them in that process, the biggest complaint that we get is, I wish we could have bought more. I hear you. Yeah. And we work hard. We're trying to bring more to the table all of the time. But okay. um, I, I think, again, going back to Miles's point, this is a gift. It's affordable and you don't have to have a medical to at least get this cushion. Amazing. So that brings us to the end of our presentation here. So I want to put my contact info on the screen. Now, those of you who are my Facebook friends, of course, you can reach out to me. Oh, sorry. Let me go back one slide. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me over Facebook. Uh, at the same time, you're also welcome to call me or email me. And I would be more than happy to um, look at the options that may apply in your case or in your family's case. And again, I, I realize that some of you, my Facebook friends, are perhaps at an age where you're not yet thinking about this sort of care, but we all have parents. We all have grandparents, loved ones. So even if you wanted to have a tentative conversation about potentially your loved ones and, uh, and how that may look for them, or perhaps you want to have your loved ones talk to me directly, I'm open either way. I would be more than happy to, to assist them. Um, and Cynthia and Miles are always available as well um, to answer. Well, I don't want to say always available. You guys have your business hours. Um, 
but you have been very easy to work with and reachable and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, we're pretty for, passionate about what we're doing. I can see that. And we're, ma we're making a positive change in our society. I'm very grateful for that. I'm really, really glad that you started this, this plan and that you are making this sort of solution available for the Canadian public. And, uh, and I want to make it clear that even though I'm only in Ontario, my dignity is licensed. You guys are countrywide. So even if uh, you happen to be located in a different Canadian province, don't be shy, reach out to me and we will make it happen between myself, uh, Cynthia, Miles, and the, the whole My Dignity team. Um, the plans are available countrywide. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. I will uh, minimize the presentation now and I'll stop sharing the screen and I'll see if, uh, if we happen to have any questions on Facebook um, or, or uh, yeah, let's see here. Okay, well, I have, uh, I have three people watching. Hi everyone, so thanks again everyone for watching. The stream seems to have been stopped. I don't think it went, it worked. I don't know what happened to be honest. I don't know if the stream actually worked. Uh, yeah, it may have not worked. It says live, but it's kind of, oh, yeah, okay, it did move, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so thanks everyone for watching. And uh, I'm gonna see if there are any questions. I'm gonna scroll down. I don't see any questions, Cynthia. Uh, if people ask any questions afterwards, of course, I will reach out to you or Miles. Thank you both again for taking the time to, to share your knowledge, your expertise, and your passion for helping Canadians with this very, very, very important area of planning. Um, any last words from uh, any of you? Thank you. Be well, stay strong. We'll get through this together. And also better six feet apart than six feet under. <laughs> Miles, you're a funny guy. I hear well, you. It's actually true. And, and we need to do a better job of practicing social distancing. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. God bless. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you again, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.